Humans! They say time flies when you're having fun, and by they, I mean you! You think the rest of us had time to come up with cute shit like that? You think a squirrel has a second to workshop some platitude that fits nice on a canvas print for your cousin to find at Michael's, put up on the kitchen wall to make life more tolerable? No, squirrels are just trying to avoid shit like starving, freezing, or being a snack for an apex predator. They don't have a moment to be positive about it. I'm sorry if existence is too bleak for you, Cheryl. At least you don't got a hawk on your ass right now. So eat, pray, live it up, but don't be mad when it goes by too fast. In reality, which is where you live, time does not fly, it just is. Only reason seems like it is because in said moment of fun, you're not paying attention to it, and so you're not fully aware of it. When you are, when you are really actually aware of time, you will find it is not short. It drags, it limps along, and it gives you anxiety attacks. But nothing changed in reality outside of yourself, Cheryl. That's just time pressure fucking with you. You know what time pressure is, because it happens all the time. You got five minutes left of your shift? Start your breathing exercises now, because that's going to be the longest five fucking minutes of your life. <laughs> and it's because your job is almost at an end. The bullshit, the moronitude, the petty dumb fuckery you've had to endure for those eight to 12 hours since you clocked in. Those 480 to 720 minutes are almost over. Those 28,800 seconds to 43,200 seconds are down to the final 300 ticks of the clock. Each of those 300,000 milliseconds ticking by, daring you, mocking you, bullying you into cracking, but you're not gonna. You've been at this job for 28,800,000 to 43,200,000 milliseconds of your existence. And that's all you goddamn have. And now here we are, almost there. Tick tock, what are you gonna do in the evening? Tick tock, drinks are just a light snack and a crash. Tick fucking talk, Cheryl. What are you gonna do with the rest of your time? What fun hath ye planned, mortal, in the home stretch of the day? So you can decompress, de stress, dust off, and get back to the fucking day tomorrow. Tick tock, tickety tockety tock, tick shit. Did it just go backwards? No. <laughs> One more second, and then finally, fuck yeah. It's time. But in that time, time didn't change. The reality of the reality around your whole entire you is that nothing has sped up or slowed down. Those hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds haven't changed. You have. They're all just as long as they've been. You, on the other hand, now have a temper shorter than half a toothpick, and it's ready to fucking snap because you've been waiting for an eternity. No wonder you call it punching the clock because when you're finally done, you're ready to knock it the fuck out Tyson style. <laughs> and the celestial bitch of it is... When you're done and ready to clock out and enjoy your time, it's suddenly nowhere to be found. But it didn't go anywhere. It's still there because time doesn't give a shit. It's been rocking and mocking your petty mortal existence all this time. Time only flies because you say so, humans, here on Earth with the rest of us. But what if you're on the moon? <laughs> what time is it now? That depends on where you are. If you're in the contiguous United States, you got six standard time zones. Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific, Hawaii, and Alaska have their own. But that's just the Avengers your Uncle Patriot recognizes, but doesn't have time to amass the knowledge of the vast amount of characters that join the Avengers. I'll spare you the hyperfixation, but Wolverine was an Avenger back in 2005 with Sentry, Luke Cage, and Echo. Kind of like how American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands are territories of the U.S. and have their own time zones. But yeah, I'm not going to start a Thanksgiving conversation right now. Just know <laughs> that there are 11 time zones in North America. And it gets more complicated because math Back in the day, people just used the sun to tell time. Sundials were all the rage. Then in the 1300s, artisans were building these newfangled devices to keep everybody on track for church. And the name of this new machine was adopted from the Latin word for bell, cloca, because when that bell went off, the whole town knew they were late for church. And they called those devices clocks. But in the 14th century, people were still using sundials. So you had to be specific when you were talking about a specific time, usually because you had money and you could give a shit. You would say, of the clock, which became o'clock. And they started when they wanted to. You just picked a moment, and the sky was a certain level of brightness. Some started at sunset, some at sunrise. See, time's been around a long time, humans. It's not a fad. It's just in the programming. And the programming, like all programming, needed to install an upgrade, because how are you going to tell the time to church 
when you're at sea. <laughs> Sailors had to navigate. And that meant finding a longitude, which is harditude thing to find. <laughs> Latitude is easy. That's just how far you are from the equator. <laughs> but because the stars were always on time, kind of, but let's not do any more math because we want to fly, so we need to have some fun, goddammit. <laughs> they developed the lunar distance method, which could determine position because time moves everything. And so the marine chronometer was made, but they had to coordinate because they didn't have Bluetooth and Apple didn't update shit. You did! <laughs> so they had to do this thing where they would line ships up at the port, watch this giant canvas ball drop, which incidentally is where the New Year's time ball drop comes from. But we gotta keep rolling because there's never enough time. Are you having fun yet? <laughs> yada yada, the railroads come along. And now you don't have your own clock. You can, you can have your own clock any old where, just because it doesn't take a fun month to get places anymore. Now got to figure out a standard time. In the U.S., the railroads all use different times. Almost all railroads out of New York ran on New York time. And railroads west from Chicago just kind of use Chicago time because fuck you, this is our time. Out there, it's their time. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. But between Chicago and Pittsburgh, Buffalo was Columbus time, even on railroads which did not run through Columbus. The Santa Fe Railroad used Missouri time all the way to the west end at Deming, New Mexico, as did the east-west lines across Texas. Central Pacific and Southern Pacific Railroads used San Francisco time all the way to El Paso. The Northern Pacific Railroad had seven time zones. Back then, time didn't fly. It lost its fucking mind. <laughs> Split into a million multiverses, and you had to have a degree in knowing what the fuck time it was all the time, or you'd be lost in the void. But in reality, which is where you live, time just flowed like it do. You made it complicated, humans, so stay with me because this is your fault. <laughs> 1883, the heads of the major railroads met in Chicago, because Goonies never say die, and they adopted the standard method. 1884, the International Meridian Conference in Washington, D.C. divided the globe into 24 time zones. Signatories chose the Royal Observatory as the prime meridian, zero degrees longitude, the line from which all other longitudes are measured, in part because two-thirds of the world's shipping already used Greenwich time for navigation and you gotta follow the money. Standard wasn't law until 1918. So look, in the grand scheme of all things, time, as you've measured it, is an iPhone 8. It's not new, but it's definitely not a Molarota razor. <laughs> all because you decided you didn't wanna stay in the same fucking place. And time needed to make sense when you went somewhere else. Even though, as previously stated with what feels like a long fucking time ago, time doesn't give a fuck about you. <laughs> and now, here we are, 2024. And NASA has decided that we're going to go to the moon again in 2026 to establish a scientific observatory, literally sailing back out into space to lay down a spot on the moon. And wouldn't you fucking know it? After all this shit, wrangling math to keep things on time, we're gonna need to know how to tell time on the fucking moon. <laughs> now the problem with that is that the moon, like the Earth, spins around on an axis while it's spinning around the Earth while Earth is spinning around the sun. So how do you break that down into time zones? Where do you start? Do you find a fixed point in the stars and start counting down from there? Do you do a sun up, sun down thing? That's an issue because the moon is slow as fuck. <laughs> a day up there lasts 29.5 days down here on Earth. So FaceTime is gonna be a fucking nightmare. It's kind of like when a friend moves to Australia. You just don't talk to them ever again. <laughs> and when you do, they're in the future, and it's summer, and they're having a better time than you are, and they're tan. <laughs> NASA figures they're going to use a bunch of atomic clocks to figure this out, dive bombing the moon with clocks like a Batman villain, and then measuring the changes and setting the standard up there like the sailors and railroads did back in the day. But the gravity in the moon is 16.6% .6 of Earth, so that's going to fuck things up probably. Not to mention, the Earth doesn't always rotate on time. This is a planet, humans. It's a physical being. And because of geological events every now and then, the Earth is a little late. We gotta add a leap second to stay on time. And scientists figured out that the effects of melting polar ice could delay the need for a leap second by three years, literally altering how we measure time. Who the fuck knows what that's gonna do with the moon when we're gonna use the Earth to keep moon time like we used to use the moon. Also, we'll all be dead before a new season of Severance comes out. Imagine. <laughs> Waiting for that on the moon. Because like I was saying, time doesn't give a fuck about you. Y'all, here's the thing. <laughs> Humans, you think of time like it's something that rules you. 
when in reality, which is where you live, it's only 12 p.m. because you said so. You made time valuable rather than just the way things are, the flow, the general sup. You measure time <laughs> with things, most of them connected to a central thing that if it wanted to can make time whatever it wants. Fuck your clocks, it's Alexa time. <laughs> time is a river of existence, man. Fucking put that in your incense burner, Cheryl. <laughs> when you measure time, it's like dropping an anchor into a moment and using that moment to mark everything forward and backward, creating the beginning. It's very biblical or it's math, depending on where you're at. We're all just sailing along, simultaneously caught in its wake, and part of it, like celestial seaweed that's also a smartwatch. I don't fucking know. I'm not a scientist. So just tell me what time it is on the fucking moon so that I can know when to clock out. I love you. Good night. Nailed it.